Welcome to a tutorial video on Unity 2023. So let's pick up where we left off in the last video. So we were discussing the relationship between the C Sharp programming language and the Unity editor. We saw that within C Sharp, we have collections of things we call classes, and these describe collections of values. Previously, we were looking at collections of values that had methods in them. These are sections of code that do things, and we saw things like the start method and the update method. We also now saw in the previous video how we can add fields to these classes, and these are individual values. The relationship between C Sharp and the way it does fields and the Unity editor is based on the level of access to that field. By default, a field is private to that class. The class has that value and can do whatever it wants with it. If we make it public by using the public keyword, then not only can Unity access that field and potentially change it within the editor, but so could potentially other code. We also saw, though, that there is an alternative to that where you can use an attribute within C Sharp called serialize field, and that will allow Unity access to it, but no one else. So it's kind of like taking a private field and extending it just one extra thing, and that one extra thing is to the Unity itself. So let's build on those ideas in this video. What we are interested in is looking at something called prefabs and then how we can use prefabs to instantiate game objects. So what do I mean by all those terms? Well, let's go back to something that appeared in several videos back. We were duplicating game objects. So over here in the hierarchy view, we have everything that's within the current scene. And remember, a scene is just a division of a game. We can think of it kind of subsections, and they contain game objects. So we've got a hierarchy view of the current scene called sample scene, and it contains our current game objects. Well, way back several videos ago, I duplicated a game object. I right-clicked right here, duplicated it, and circle became circle one. And when we did that, we noticed that the duplication of a game object duplicated all of its corresponding components, which is very useful. Let's do something a little bit strange. I'm going to duplicate circle one so it becomes circle two. Now, we've previously seen that when we work within Unity, we have the hierarchy view, the scene view, the inspector view, and the project view. It may be an assumption people can make that the project view and the hierarchy view are in fact two separate things, and they are to a degree, but there is an ability that we have that can shift something from the hierarchy view into the project view. That is, we can take a game object that exists in memory that we're working with as we create scenes and work with things within Unity, and we can make it a file. This is a process called prefabrication. In other words, we are fabricating, which just means creating, and we are pre-doing it. So that is, we're setting aside a file that describes all of the settings, all of the values of a particular game object, but it doesn't exist yet. It is prefabricated. That is, it has all the information it needs, but it doesn't exist yet. So here's what I mean. I'm going to take circle two, which is right here, and I'm going to just drag it over a little bit. So this is circle two right here. It's currently in the scene view. And I'm going to click and drag it from the hierarchy view down here to the project view and let go. And then it created what's known as a prefab, which is just an abbreviation for prefabrication, which is just a more complicated word of saying these are all the settings. This is the file representation of a game object. So notice down here, we have a little kind of icon and circle two appears right here within the project view. And because it's selected, it also has all of its corresponding components over here on the right hand side within the inspector view. But notice it says prefab asset, and it says root in prefab asset. So it's a prefab, a prefabrication. In other words, it's a file representing a game object, and it's down here in the project view. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did he just do that? Why would we need prefabs? Well, there might be situations where you want to generate game objects on the fly. That is, when the scene starts, you might want to generate some stuff or arrange some things. You might want to do things like generate enemies at a particular position within the space. You might do other things like generate bullets on the fly. You could also generate things like merchants or generate sections of the scene or do all kinds of dynamic things. For many of those cases, you actually want the game object to be a file first and then generate it as needed rather than put it in the scene and rearrange it. So let's go with that first approach. What we're interested in is can I 
make a prefab, which we've just done. We've set up a file that exists as a game object, the representation of a game object as a file. Now can I create it? The process of creating a game object from a file using a prefab to create that game object dynamically is called instantiation, which is just a complicated word of meaning take the file that represents a game object and make a game object out of it while the game is running. So instantiation. So we have a prefab, a file version of a game object. We're going to create it. To do that, let's revisit the previous concepts that we explored in another video. That is looking at fields, which is why I started this video discussing them. So what I want to do is I want to set up a serialized field such that I can take a prefab value and give it to a game object so that it starts at runtime with that value. I'm not going to set it in the code itself. I'm going to allow the Unity editor to give it that value when it then creates that game object. And this is where we get into the complicatedness of thinking about fields that appeared in the previous video. So we need to make a decision. Is this going to be a public field or is this going to be a private field or is it going to be a private field that's serialized? Well, I kind of already answered that question. Serialized is probably the best approach, but we might use public in another example. So. Let's do something with that. So first thing I'm going to do, because this exists as a prefab down here in the project view, I'm going to go ahead and click on this, right click and delete it from the current scene. So it doesn't exist in the current scene, but it does exist as a prefab. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to create it dynamically. So to do that, we're going to need some other things. Let's start by revisiting Square. So I'm going to double click it and it's going to open Visual Studio for me. And let's revisit this idea right here of serialized field. Again, serialized field is an example of what's called an attribute within the C-sharp programming language. And this just means if we put a little cursor over it, the tooltip tells us, it will serialize a private field, force Unity to serialize it. In other words, it will just share it with Unity and nothing else. So to use this, basically we set up a field and we add this little attribute above it. So what I'm gonna do is something a little strange. And I'm going to call this circle. Now remember, all attribute or all fields that are, that is, are private by default. So this is private right now. But as it anticipates I might want to do, I want to go ahead and make this a serialized field. So I'm going to press tab and it's going to add that for me. So what this means as a review is it's private to this class and it's shared only to Unity. So no other code can access it. So it's private, but it's also serialized to Unity, which means Unity can change things. So let's go ahead and file save. Now, as we saw in the previous video, when we either make a field public or we make it a serialized field, it will appear in the Unity editor. We can go change things in the Unity editor and it will then affect the code when it goes to run. So let's go look at that. There it goes. Go ahead and select square. So notice we've got speed right here, which we can reset to 3.14. And then it says none. So remember, oops, sorry. <laughs> remember C Sharp cares about the types of things. So because we set it as a game object type, similar to what float is as a type, then it has to be a game object we can put in here. Well, that's easy because I've explained that prefabricated objects, prefabs, or the file representation of a game object, which means it is a game object. So I'm gonna do something a little bit strange. Remember we move something from the hierarchy view down here to the project view to create a prefabricated object, a prefab. I'm gonna move this prefab over here into the inspector view. So now we're gonna move this and I'm gonna drop it right here. And then notice it says circle two and it matches the name circle two down here. So what just happened? So first, by moving something from the hierarchy view to the project view, we make it a prefab, a prefabricated object, which is a file representation of a game object. Next, because prefabs are game objects, I can move the prefab from here as a value and drop it over here in the inspector view. So what we've done is we set this up to say, when the file called square, a C-sharp programming file, when it goes to run, the Unity editor will hand it two different values. It will hand it speed and it will hand it the value representing the prefab. 
So right now we can immediately use speed. That's just a float value, it's a decimal value, that's fine. But we need to do one more step to use circle. So let's return to the code here. So speed will be fine, we'll be handed 3.14, not a problem at all. To use a prefab, we need to create it. I mentioned that much earlier in the video. So the creation process, as I shared, is called instantiation. So we saw a previous pattern of doing things with game objects when we were working with destroy. So that's way down here on line 33. So it says destroy, but the actual location of that is game object. Sorry, I'm gonna take out this space. It's called game object at destroy. But we usually just write destroy. So remember, we always have we always have access to something called game object and all of its methods, which deal with the game objects themselves. So game object destroy, or we just simply call it destroy. As a slightly more efficient way of writing that. So remember, it's always game object dot destroy. So up here in start, what I want to do is I want to say game object dot instantiate, and then in here, circle. So circle right here is circle up here. Remember that the scope now is outside of any of these methods. Similar to speed, circle now as a game object has the same scope that is exists with the same space as start, update, and on closure enter 2D. Because it's up here and defined within the class, any of these other things can access it. So what I've just written is game object dot instantiate circle. In other words, take the options, the settings that make up that game object as a file and create a game object from it. Create it. Or, as it's called in a more technical sense, instantiate it. So notice though, this is a slightly shaded color right here. And it says, hey, um, there's a fix. The name can be simplified. Because what it wants me to write is simply instantiate. And that's the more efficient way. But notice instantiate line 17 is very similar to destroy line 34. It's still using game object in its methods to affect something. So we're creating game objects, but behind the scenes, there is in fact a class that's doing that for us. And it has its own methods, instantiate and destroy and some other ones we might see in future videos. But at least for right now, we're saying, okay, take this circle right here that exists as a file representing a game object, Create the game object right here, line 17, when start is called. Remember the start method runs before the drawing method runs. So all the initialization stuff will be run, and then we'll get into that train going around the tracks. So let's go ahead and file, save. So this says, take the file, create it as a game object, put it into the scene, and then do everything else we would have done anyway. So if we go back to Unity, and now we play. Now we have three game objects. And in fact, if we move around and I'm using the arrow keys to move, they will all act exactly the same because they are duplicates of each other. So potentially, although I won't do it right now, we could take circle one out. So instead of having circle and circle one and duplicating this many, many, many times, we could just write code that would then instantiate, again, just meaning create a game object on the fly or dynamically. So when the scene starts, we could have a bunch of game objects created for us and we wouldn't necessarily have to create a bunch of them, put them in the hierarchy view and arrange them all. We could do it through code if we wanted. Again, keep in mind, as we learn more things about Unity, there are multiple ways to approach problems. As we saw with fields, we can make things public or we make things serialized. And exist now as a parallel to that, we can create a whole bunch of game objects in a current scene. That's perfectly fine, perfectly valid. Or we can use code to do the same thing for us. And both approaches are equally valid, depending on what we're doing. There might be cases where creating them is slightly more efficient if we're dealing with a large number of them. If you're dealing with bullets or things moving around, you probably don't want a thousand game objects in your scene. You probably just want to create them as needed. But in the cases of things like coin or health packs or whatever we're picking up, we might want to create them or we might want to place them. And we, again, both are perfectly valid. So let me review what I've talked about in this video. We've learned we can create prefabs, which is an abbreviated word of prefabricated objects, which just means all of the settings and values that represent a game object as a file. 
And we saw that we can move game objects from the hierarchy view down into the project view, and it will create a file matching those values. We've also now seen that as we work with fields, one of the fields we can create are things called game objects. It is just another type, just like float was. And we've also seen how we can change values in the Unity editor by making fields either public or serialized. In either case, we can change them in the Unity editor. And if we create game object field, a, because a prefab is a game object, we can move a prefab and connect it from the project view to the inspector view. And this allows us to dynamically create game objects based on sets of values. So instead of creating a bunch of different game objects in a scene, we can dynamically create them when the game runs, when the scene runs and the game runs instead. So we can either create a bunch of them in an existing scene and arrange them as needed, or dynamically create them, and there are reasons to do both. Again, for creating lots of things, we probably want a thousand different game objects in a scene, but we only have a handful of things, or a dozen, or maybe even 20 or 30, we could probably just create them in the scene and arrange them as needed. Again, pros and cons to both, depending on our organization. So all of these are now useful ideas as we continue to build on our knowledge in Unity 2023. We're continuing to build on the relationship between C-sharp programming language and the Unity editor itself, paying attention to now how we're using fields to build on our previous knowledge of working with methods. We're still, though, navigating between creating game objects that have components, and those components talk to systems. But as we've now seen, we can create duplicates of game objects and create prefabs of game objects and use all of those with our existing knowledge within Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.